Hello everyone. Um, today we're going to start our unit on comparison and contrast, um, writing and comparison and contrast essays. We're going to look at several sample essays in order to get an idea of how we want to construct our own writing. Right. Um, this lecture is required before you come to class so that you'll already have an idea of what um, a comparison and contrast essay entails. Um, there are going to be several directions given to you during this PowerPoint presentation and I want you to actively take notes and I also want you to stop at several points and um, follow the directions that are given during the lecture. Right? Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, there are several words that you're going to have to know the definition of. The first thing is actually what a comparison is how it relates to contrast, and then what are points of comparison. Uh, comparison is something that shows the similarities between two or more subjects. Usually those subjects are not too dissimilar so that they do have some things that they have in common, right? Contrast is going to show the difference between two subjects, and the same thing goes for contrast as well. You're not going to choose two topics that are so vastly dissimilar that there's nothing um, uh, that they have in common. You are going to choose uh, subjects that have something in common so that you can highlight the differences. Okay? Um, and then a point of comparison, we will get into what that definition is a little bit later on in the presentation. But a point of comparison is the actual attribute and class of this thing that you are um, describing or or choosing to write about. Okay? Generally, when you write a comparison, you're going to write it to explain the similarities and differences between a subject so as to make both of them clear. Right? Um, you can do this in one of two ways. You can do it in an explanatory comparison or you're going to either evaluate the two subjects. An evaluation is going to differ from um, an explanatory comparison in that um, the explanatory comparison does not take a position. The writer, you as the writer, you will not take a, com a position. You're not going to tell whether one is um, a better choice than the other. Um, you're simply going to focus on what the merits of the similarities and differences actually are. An example for that would be for you to look at two different versions of the iPhone. You could look at the iPhone 7, you could look at the iPhone 11, and you could simply just state what their similarities and what their differences are, all right? And you would stop at that point. Um, an evaluative uh, comparison is going to take that same comparison, but it's going to go a step further. It's going to either cite your preference for one over the other, or it's going to um, suggest which one to for the consumer to actually purchase, which one would be more beneficial for the consumer. And so that is the difference between the two different types of essays there. Points of comparison are going to be used to treat two or more subjects, like I said. Um, there's a wide variety of subjects that you could choose from. Um, you as a writer with this particular writing assignment, you are going to be given some parameters as to what types of comparison and subjects you can deal with. And then from that list that you're going to be given for your essay, you can um, decide which points of comparison you want to um, focus on for that particular uh, essay. These points are going to help you arrange similarities and differences between the subjects. They're going to ensure that you direct um, a comparison rather than a random listing of unrelated characteristics. And this is going to be vital to you writing an effective thesis statement. Right? So what I want you to do right now is I want you to pause this video um, after I give you the directions. I want you to think about the comparison that I just um, gave you here with the iPhone 7 versus the iPhone 11. I want you to research those two different phones and their features. And I want you to brainstorm a list 
of points of comparison that you could use for to um, write about the differences or similarities between those two iPhones, all right? So again, I want you to research, do a Google search of both phones, look at their features, see what their similarities are, see what their differences are, and then I want you to brainstorm a list of points of comparison. You're gonna be expected to bring these points of comparisons into class, so please pause this video at this time and make sure that you do that. Hopefully you were able to put your list together and we're gonna take those points of comparison that you helped um, to um, brainstorm and we're gonna actually apply those when thinking about how to write a thesis statement for a comparison and contrast essay, All right? Those points are compare of comparison are gonna be very vital to you writing your essay or writing the thesis for your essay. Before you can ever put a thesis together, you have to have a list of points of comparison that you're going to consider for this subject. When writing a thesis statement or a controlling idea, the class, the points of comparison, and the specific differences and similarities that you want to focus on are going to be um, vital to constructing a thesis statement. I did a sample one here for you over um, America, the differences and similarities between American football and then rugby, which is a European sport, right? And um, though the two sports are similar, they do have some major differences between them. And so th because the subject is similar but also has differences, this makes it an ideal subject for me to discuss, right? Um, I did the thesis statement both ways to show you what an explanatory thesis statement would look like and what an evaluation or evaluative um, thesis statement would look like. Okay? Um, let's do the explanatory one first because it's simply just straightforward, no um, suggestions on which one is better or what you should do or whatever. Um, this one says, though rugby requires less strength and more stamina than American football, the two games are very much alike in their rules and strategies, right? So you can see where I'm going with this thesis statement. I'm giving you a list of similarities, and I'm also giving you a list of differences, right? And I'm not evaluating which is better, which one you should play, which one, none of that. I'm just simply explaining what the differences and the similarities are. And so my thesis statement is very straightforward and to that point. If you take this same subject and look at it from an evaluative um, perspective, um, you can see how the thesis statement is going to change there. The thesis is going to become um, a little bit more direct and um, it's also going to evaluate um, the differences and similarities and the effect of those differences and similarities in this sport, right? For the evaluative uh, thesis, it says the two sports have similar rules and strategies, but American football requires more strength and is much riskier than rugby. So here in this sentence, I am actually offering a perspective. I'm actually offering um, an idea about um, weighing the, the comparisons and differences here. Instead of just stating what they are, I'm giving you a perspective. I'm telling you that this one is much riskier, all right? So as to give you the information in order to cause you to either want to take it up or um, want to play rugby instead of playing American football. So I'm basically telling you um, that this is a risky sport and it may be one that you want to stay away from. So I'm, I'm, I'm weighing or evaluating the, the um, characteristics of this subject, right? What I want you to do now is I want you to take your points of comparison from the last little um, brainstorm that I asked you to do and I want you to write a thesis statement based off of those points of comparison that you chose. I want you to write both types of thesis statements. I want you to write an evaluative thesis 
and an explanatory thesis over those two iPhones, the iPhone 7, the iPhone 11. In this one, remember, you're just gonna be explaining what the similarities and differences are. In the evaluative um, thesis statement though, you could offer your opinion as to which one is better or which one the consumer should purchase, all right? And that, of course, is gonna be stated in your thesis. Make sure that your thesis is concise and to the point and you don't have too much information, um, too much superfluous uh, uh, information there, things that you don't need. Make sure it is to the point. Um, and a good idea would be for you to mimic these two samples that you have here when writing about yours, okay? So right now what I want you to do is pause this video, write those two thesis statements, and you are going to bring those two thesis statements into class with you. All right, um, so you should have, by this point, put together two thesis statements. We're going to talk about the actual essay and the structure of it. When you are writing a comparison essay, you want to consider these things. Should the subjects be treated in equal detail or should one be emphasized over the other? How much time do you give the subjects that you're writing about? Um, another question that students often have is, should the essay focus on similarities or differences or both, right? You may not know, which one should I focus on in my essay? Um, another question many students have is, what organizational writing method should be used? Should you use point by point or subject by subject? Here are my suggestions for those three questions. As far as should the subjects be treated equal, you want to give the subjects equal emphasis when they are equally familiar or when you are writing an evaluative um, comparison contrast paper. If you're evaluating them, you don't want to overdo one and spend less time on the other. You want to give them equal weight when you are evaluating. Um, you can, though, stress one subject over the other when it is more familiar to you or when it is the one that you are going to suggest that the writers actually um, partake in. Right? The second question, should the, essay, should the essay focus on similarities or differences or both? Well, you're still going to stress them equally when all points of comparison are equally familiar or important. If all the points of comparison are equally important, then you're going to focus on them equally. You can stress the differences between subjects uh, when the similarities are between subjects are considered different. So you're going to stress the differences when the differences outweigh um, the similarities. Um, and you're going to stress the similarities between the subjects when they're considered different. Let me say that again so as not to confuse you, right? When the similarities between the two subjects are um, considered different, you are going to stress the similarities. When the two subjects are considered really similar, you are going to stress the differences. So you're going to do the opposite there, right? The third question was, what organizational writing method should be used? For this and for most comparison contrast essays, most writers engage in two methods. You can either do the subject by subject method, which means you focus on one subject at a time. One body paragraph or part of my essay is going to be over rugby. And then the second few body paragraphs will be over American football. Or you can do um, what is called the point by point analysis. Uh, when you group the subjects based on their points of comparison. So instead of having the first part of my essay focus on American um, football, I'm going to focus it on the use of strength and stamina. And then I'm going to talk about both subjects at the same time. And then I'll move to the next point of comparison, um, the health benefits. And I'll focus on both subjects at the same time. Right? 
Um, I would say generally the point by point analysis seems to be more sophisticated. Um, there's no set of standards that you would choose when talking about one or the other. When you're using the point by point uh, method, it just simply allows the reader to remember the two subjects because you're talking, you're discussing them both at the same time. Whereas with the block method or the subject by subject, if the latter part of your essay is focusing on rugby, sometimes the reader can forget what you said about American football and then they'll have to go back and reread. But if you do the point by point comparison, you're discussing both subjects at the same time. Um, so as to give the reader a greater idea of the characteristics of both subjects. Right? Um, but that is going to be a personal choice for you as a writer. Um, here's a sample of what a subject by subject would look for. Um, just a visual to give you some idea. For the subject by subject, I would focus on the first part of my paper on American football. I'll have a paragraph on the strength. I have a paragraph on stamina. I'll have a paragraph on health risks, all for American football. I would move to rugby and then I would do the same thing. I'll have a paragraph on strength, a paragraph on the stamina, a paragraph on the health risks. Um, and then my conclusion would then again focus on uh, both subjects. For me, I would say that the subject by subject um, structure would be more useful when you're doing the um, explanatory comparison essay. If you're going to do an evaluative essay, I would suggest doing the point by point because you can look at both subjects together and it helps you evaluate the effectiveness of, or the characteristics of both subjects at the same time. So I would do a point by point analysis when I'm doing an evaluative essay. Um, the way the point by point analysis would look is that you would focus on stamina and then you would focus one paragraph on stamina for American football. I'm sorry, or this would normally be all be done in one paragraph. You would focus the first part of the paragraph on American football, then you transition to rugby, but you're still discussing stamina within that entire paragraph. Same thing with the point by point. You would be just, your entire paragraph would be over the strength that is required from both. You would first discuss, discuss American football, and then you would transition in the same paragraph to discuss rugby. Same thing with the health risk. You're going to have an entire paragraph over the health risk. You would start off discussing the health risks of American football, then transition within that paragraph to discuss rugby. Um, and then that gives you a greater chance to evaluate which one is um, riskier based off of that thesis sentence that I talked about earlier. Hopefully this has given you an idea of, or an introductory idea of what a comparison and contrast essay entails. Some of the terms that you need to make sure that you are familiar with and that you actually um, have a good grasp of before you get into class are going to be the definition of a comparison, what the definition of contrast, what a point of comparison is, um, what a point by point uh, writing method is, what a subject by subject writing method is, the two types of comparison essays you could write, evaluative or explanatory. Right? want you to make sure you take good notes on this PowerPoint. You can rewind this video, look at it over and over, do whatever you need for you to come to a full understanding. There will be a quiz over this video posted in our modules that you will need to um, complete before class. We will discuss all of these things in great detail in class as well as do some hands-on activities um, to give you a better grasp and understanding of these um, concepts. Thank you for joining in. Please make sure that you complete all assignments before attending class on Monday. And I will see you 6 o'clock sharp. Hello, everyone. Um, today we're going to start our unit on.